Hey guys, this is Epos. This is probably by far the most insane unboxing I have ever done, or at least attempted, who knows if this will happen, on the channel. I don't always do unboxings, but when I do, I go a little bit crazy. So just to get any sort of misleading claims out of the way, not all of these are going to be unboxed today, and some of these are big shipping boxes for other things that I will be getting, or that I will be opening specifically. Some of these are already open. This is more of a channel update kind of video where I'm showing you the projects that I'm working on. I just wanted to have a little bit more fun with it and actually appeal to those who just want to lo look at the tech stuff and not listen to the meta back-end discussion. So we have a lot of boxes here that I need to unbox and it's going to be interesting. I'm going to try to start with the easier things to pull off of this giant mess and go from deeper from there. So starting all the way up top here, we have mostly a couple keyboard boxes. So this is the Epic Gear Defiant, which I will hopefully be reviewing at some point. I honestly hate the keyboard. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's been my least favorite keyboard and it may be the, my most negative review. So I've been really putting off the review, uh, but I did get this in for review back in October when I moved into this apartment and I'm only just really getting to it. And like I said, I hate it. It feels kind of bad. Next up, we have the Logitech uh, G413 Silver and the G810 Orion Spectrum, both of which reviews will be live by the time you see this video. New keyboards from Logitech, been having a blast reviewing them, and the G810 was my favorite, I called it my favorite gaming keyboard, but then the G413 ended up being my favorite keyboard overall that I've used, uh, slightly in competition with the WASD keyboards I've been reviewing, so pretty crazy. What else do we have through here? Uh, we have a lot of smart home stuff. I guess I can go ahead and pull that out because I mostly opened it on my own already. So I have a Samsung smart home hub. So I've got the multi multi-purpose like door sensor. I've got a water leak sensor. And then I've got the actual smart home hub itself here, which I will be setting up and testing for a review for a specific app, as well as the Logitech Harmony remote. Seems pretty cool, haven't gotten it set up yet or figured it out. And then I got one of these LifeX bulbs, which I will have to figure out. They will play nicely with my Philips Hue stuff, which I need to be reviewing soon as well. But all of that is part of a smart home project that I am working on that I'm pretty excited for, but also a little intimidated by since I've never messed with a whole lot of smart home stuff. All right, next up we have this XSEC. It's a flash card for the Game Boy Advance to play Game Boy Advance ROMs off of a micro SD card. This was essentially like my wet dream as a kid when it comes to gaming because I very early on, like even in middle school, maybe late elementary school, I discovered the ROM hack scene and really got into that. And I always wanted to be able to play them on my actual Game Boy instead of on an emulator. And I didn't know these existed. I just imagined something like this existing and heard of people talking about it but didn't understand the concept. So I found this one for like 40 or 50 bucks on Amazon. Kind of chintzy looking, but we are going to try it out and see if it's worth reviewing. Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements 15. This is the newest version that came out uh, late last year. I want to do some tutorial videos on it and things like that and make a recommendation on it for those that don't want to pay the full price or get into Premiere Pro. So I picked up a copy of my own so I can make some tutorials. And I also grabbed a micro SD card for the flash card. Next up here, we have the Gamdius Zeus P1 RGB gaming mouse. This thing is pretty cool. It's super lightweight though. I've been using it in some of my streams and testing it out already. Review is probably actually gonna be up by the time you watch this. But my first full RGB gaming mouse, been having fun with it. What else do we have here? Okay, this one, if I can pull it out Jenga style, this is a like $40 tripod that I got sent for review from Mac Trim. I didn't get sent it, I got like a discount on it. I only paid like 20 bucks for it and I wanted to do more budget gear reviews. I have some more budget gear stuff coming soon. So I wanted to go ahead and review this and this will be a sharp contrast to something else we're gonna be opening from one of these big boxes very soon. Up here at the top, I don't even know if you can see this, we have the box for the my Atomos Ninja 2. I am borrowing this from a colleague, the same guy that I borrowed the uh, big, uh, 1970s tripod that I made a video on that I'm actually using right now to prop my camera up. Uh, this is a dedicated video recorder and monitor, but it only goes up to 1080p 30. So I did a comparison of recording at 720p 60 with it compared to 
1080p60 on an Elgato capture card. I'm finishing that up right now. It is pretty cool, but these recorders are awesome. I just wish I had a 4K one for my G7. I'm just trying to get through all the stuff that I'm not actually unboxing here. So here we have the box for my Mackie CR3 studio monitors. You saw them in my office tour if you checked that out. My first pair of actual studio audio monitors and I'm super stoked to finally get a review up on them. I honestly don't think I can go back to normal computer speakers. I recently got sent a WD Black PCIe SSD that I'm going to be doing a sponsored video on. It's how I record some full 10-bit uncompressed video. Pretty freaking cool, really, really fast. My first M.2 SSD that I install myself. My System76 laptop has one and my CyberPower PC has a Intel 750 series PCIe full SSD, but this is my first self-installed M.2 SSD. Pretty cool. And then I also have the Elgato Stream Deck that, of course, I unboxed and reviewed that if you didn't catch that, I still have the box and my old stream deck in here. I'm trying to figure out what to do with that just yet. All right, we are getting to some more fun stuff. Here we have the Sonos Play 1. This is a smart speaker. It is a big, giant, super powerful, super bassy, like sounds amazing, wireless speaker. And I was having a blast with it. That's part of the smart home setup, but I'm gonna have a dedicated review on that because it's so freaking cool. Then we have the box here for my DBX. 286S, which was my uh, preamp processor, audio processing rack unit for my uh, Audio-Technica broadcast headset that I use for my live streams now. Going to have a full review on this up as well. My first formal review of a rack-mounted audio processing unit, so should be pretty cool. And right, here we have an Aki uh, LED backlit 87 keys, so 10 keyless uh, mechanical keyboard that they sent me for review that I actually haven't unboxed yet. So let's go ahead and get that open. Let's see what we have in the box. They include a keycap puller, which is nice as always. This is going to be one of my first full budget keyboard reviews. It's like in the box, you just get the keycap puller, the USB cable, manual, and the keyboard itself. Pretty hefty and sturdy feeling. Nice, clicky sounding. Sort of looks like cherry stems there for the mechanical key stem. Should be a fun review. It's got some heft to it. I'm actually pretty impressed by that. All right, over here we have my first uh, shoulder rig mount for a camera. I ordered this so, so Chu can have something easier to hold when she's holding the camera for some of my videos as she normally just has it handheld and it gets a little shaky and puts a lot of strain on her back. So. So we have here, I'm not gonna put it together right now if it needs to put together. Actually, it may not. Okay, so this is a full shoulder mount. You can see the mounting plate for the camera and then it just folds out here. And you have a full shoulder shooting rig for the camera, which is really slick. And I'm excited to try this out. This will be our first actual like professional recording setup. See it. And you could theoretically add, it's got a tap, so you can maybe add a counterweight to it as well, although my G7 doesn't weigh a lot, but just provides a nice sturdy platform, a lot smoother shots. And I may even use this for some B-roll shots when I wanna do like specific motion that a slider or fluid head won't do, as it's gonna be a lot more stable than trying to hold it handheld or with one of those mic rigs that I've had. Just a little bit better for those long-term, like the studio tour and things like that. Can even do it one-handed and looks pretty cool. I'm excited. And this thing was only like 35 bucks too. It's not bad. All right, here we have two pairs of earbuds from Rosewill. Yes, Rosewill, the like PC accessory maker also has a music division and they sent me over their EX700 and EX500 earbuds to try out for review. And Chu's gonna end up with one of these after the review is done because she needs some new earbuds. But these are supposed to be super more like audiophile level for budget though. I mean, they're still budget, but they got really nice ear tips. It's got, you can't really see that with this angle, but it's got a little braided cable inside of the cable, inside of the shielding. Got nice tips, really high build quality too. And it comes with a nice little bag and some replacement ear tips. Pretty sweet. I'm excited to check these out. It's been a little while since I've done an earbud review. So I am excited to see what I can come up with to make that a little bit more exciting. I'm not in the same area anymore, so I can't, or you know, in the same shooting space, so I can't do the exact same format. I'm not gonna open this one, but here we have a pop filter that cost me like $6. 
and I'm reviewing this to do a comparison to a more expensive pop filter. This one's from Newer, the other one's from Editor's Keys that I got with a mic review I did last year, and I had a lot of questions about what's the difference between a cheap and more expensive pop filter if they're still the same fly swatter design. And so I wanna do a brief video showcasing the key points to that. Here we have some Harman Kardon Soho headphones. Now these I picked up from Amazon last, maybe around Black Friday or Cyber Monday. They were originally $200 headphones and they cost me like less than 50 bucks, I believe, when I got them on the sales. And so I wanted to do a comparison of how they sounded a couple years after their original release date when they came out as being so expensive. Now they come with this nice hard shell case here to really protect them, which is expected for headphones this expensive. Pops up, got very thin headphone cables, but an interesting form factor, very small headphones. Will be interesting to see if they're worth the original $200 price or even what I paid for them. All right, next up here we have something else I already went ahead and unboxed and that is the EasyViz Mini 360 Plus, which is another security camera. Gonna have a review and setup tutorial on that shortly. All right, next up down here, we have a new teleprompter, the Parrot teleprompter. This one is much smaller than the one I have been using. I got the one I use requires a huge rig and a lot of setup time, and this one just screws on the actual camera lens. So I am excited to give it a try. Let's go ahead and open up and show what's inside here. This thing was only 99 bucks, which was about the same price as I paid for the super cheap one I use. User's manual. Then we have the teleprompter itself right up front. So it has a nice little shield to keep dust out if you leave it setting up. That way you can just slide this off and keeps the glass from, or it might be plastic, but the glass from getting much dust on it, which can affect the image and your ability to see it. And then it has this, the screw mount system. And I do have some step up rings so I can adapt it to any lens size should be a lot easier and make sure I'm actually always staring at the lens instead of like slightly to the right or left of it, but we'll see how easy it is to use because it won't be a manual trigger anymore. And actually they include a bunch of step. I got, I got the step up and step down rings for a different reason, but it looks like they include a full stack of them here so you can adapt it to any lens size. And then you just use their little mobile app to control the teleprompter, add the text in and so on. So. Theoretically way easier setup. We'll see if that actually turns out to be true. But I felt it was time to get away from the super big teleprompter rig that I had been using. All right, we're gonna go ahead and tackle these big Amazon and B&H boxes that have been basically taking up the whole frame. That way we can focus on some of the more exciting stuff. I did actually just order a Manfrotto tripod legs and fluid video. That was close. I don't think any of that was on camera. Whew. That could have cut my mic cable too. Oh, I need to make sure that's still working. It's still working, okay. <laughs> I had my big super sharp knife sitting on, apparently hanging off the edge of my table and I elbowed it and it flipped off and hit me and then fell on the floor. Could have cut my mic cable, could have stabbed me. Don't play with big knives, kids. Just cause you see it on YouTube doesn't mean it's something you should be doing. Anyway, <laughs> I ordered a fluid video head and tripod legs from Manfrotto. Super, it's more expensive than I normally spend on this stuff, but to get some more stable, nice shots for b-roll so i am super stoked to unbox these and then i have a new uh led light kit coming as well to replace my big bright cfl bulbs that i'm currently using that make this room super sweaty i just showered before this video and i may need to rinse back off once i'm done shooting all right it's unboxing time ah! Ah! all right b and h boxes are always super easy to open because you can See the main piece of tape you need to open and that's all that is required. Set the knife up there, try not to stab myself this time. All right, so this is the tripod legs. <laughs> One giant box out of the way. So these are the tripod legs. It is, no, this is the head, my bad. So this is the MVH502AH, also known as the 502HD. They are the same tripod head that is that, that confused me and stalled me for a couple days as I was trying to figure out the difference. So this is the big fancy fluid tripod head. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the legs out so we can put them together and show the unboxing that way. Uh, but that is what the box looks like. I believe this other big box here will be my tripod legs. Might be the light kit too, I'm not really certain. What do we got in here? Actually, no, I believe this is the light kit. All right, so I'll pull this box out. Ugh. 
and we will come back to it. Ugh. Yes, that is my light kit, so we will come back to that. I have no clue where this box is supposed to go. Let's just knock it off the table, shall we? Oh, it doesn't even fall off the table. There we go. All right, so this other big box would be the tripod legs. One came from Amazon, one came from B&H, so that was, they didn't come together. Although I may add back into the video, I did find out, I did get an email notification from UPS that B&H is shipping me something else. I can't imagine what it would be, but if it's something interesting, I'll just add it into this video so that everything's together. I, did, I haven't talked to anyone about review units and I didn't order anything else. There's nothing else in my orders. Theoretically, it could be like a warranty or something, but I didn't pay for a warranty. It's not on my order list, like with my camera. And I believe with my camera, they ship the warranty USPS, not UPS. So I don't have a clue. Okay, so yeah, these are the tripod legs. Ugh. The O55 or the MT055X Pro 3 because and Frodo's product names are amazing. So these are the legs in the box. They are aluminum, I believe, not the carbon fiber ones. Yeah, aluminum, but they look like they will be what I need. So I guess we'll start assembling this process here. And the tripod leg box should be fairly boring because it should all be put together and just be tripod legs. We shall see. Yay, actual styrofoam, my favorite. Yeah, there we go. Big beastly rig here. Expensive too. Thankfully I had, I, as a survey reward or cash back on a purchase when I ordered my camera, I had like a $30 B&H gift card in my email that I was able to use to save me a tiny bit on this. But by the way, product links will be in the description below. As always, I do have affiliate links for B&H and Amazon now. So if you are shopping for any of this, I appreciate it if you use my links. So, damn, this thing is beefy. I was wondering, like, my big concern was that I already had some decent but cheap tripod legs and they were super light, so without any weighting system, I wasn't going to be able to keep it steady. But these are, like, it's not too heavy to move around, but it's hefty enough that it feels like it's going to hold things up well. Got rubber grips on the, uh, on two of the legs here. And then we got latch locks, big beefy locks to actually uh, secure the leg length which is kind of neat. And then the main mounting point up top here with a cap on it. We'll leave that on for the moment and get to the tripod head here. Now this is the 502 HD fluid video head, which again is gonna make my pan and tilt shots a lot smoother. I am also looking into a, uh, a slider system soon. I still have to review my super cheap like $100 slider I got a couple years back, um, but I do, I am looking for an upgrade I think I have found the one I want from Selens. I think that's the brand. It's super obscure, but it looks to be like the Shark S1, but cheaper. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So in the box, we get the tripod head itself, which again, is huge and beefy. The carrying handle, well, that's not a carrying handle. That's the pan and tilt handle, basically. And that looks to be all that's in the dividers in this box down here. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Much more excitingly packaged than any of the other video gear I've bought as well. And you get to choose here on the left or the right which side your handle gets mounted on, which is really cool. All right, so we simply take the tripod legs, screw off this little cap, and we screw on the tripod head. And then we have Manfrotto's quick release system. I may still throw an Arca Swiss plate on there. I'm running out of plates and clamps. I don't know where a lot of them went, to be honest. So I will need to order some more soon if I'm gonna stick with the Arca Swiss system. Uh, Manfrotto's system, you just kind of loosen that and then it slides out and then you have a button down here, I believe, which completely lets it free. It moves that lever. So fairly straightforward, although it's not one to go back in. Am I doing it wrong? Oh, the screws are like on top of each other. There we go, yeah. And then tighten this little latch on the side and it's rock solid in place. And you have two different types of attachment screws. I guess I'll have to take one off if I don't use, since I'm not using that fat one. That way you could attach like an entire other uh, tripod head, I guess, if you wanted. So then if we attach the arm here on the right, got little notches to lock it into place on the head. 
this thing is rock solid. Like I am super impressed. And if I loosen up the fluid system on the left here, uh, oh, ooh, that is smooth. Once you figure out what the hell you're doing. Yep, there's a lock here too. Oh man, ah oh, yeah. All right, so these, these knobs on the side tighten or loosen the system, the like tension. So that's super loose, so I'd want it a little bit tighter. Let's lock it up here. Ooh, that is super smooth. And then same thing with left to right, you can tighten that system. Ah, this thing is gonna be amazing. So I'm gonna lock everything back into place here, and now it's rock solid as a tripod. Pretty beefy rig. I am so freaking stoked. This is gonna make my B-roll production so much better. Really worthwhile investment, IMO. All right, we have a couple things left here to unbox. We have this, which is a, it's supposed to be like a karaoke microphone system. It's a wireless microphone system from Vocal Artists UHF, I guess. I think there was another company that actually sent me it, but it's an Amazon listing. Just a basic wireless mic system, handheld mics. Might, the reason I was interested in this is this might be a good like convention or show wireless system for me basic handheld mic and then I can have a mic for people to talk and things like that. Get myself one of those little square cards that go around it to say like who I am and stuff. Might be kind of cool. I don't really know. I haven't, I've had this for a couple months and haven't actually gotten to take a look at it yet. I also have a wireless lav mic system from Sarah Monic that I've used in a couple videos but haven't reviewed yet. So that is on the list. And then this mic system connects by this hub here. So you've got right and left out, right and left in and out by a 3.5 millimeter, right and left out by a 1 4th inch power, power button, and then control knobs for the volume and echo and another mic input. I was under the impression these were wireless. Yes, they are wireless. They take, it looks like double-A batteries or something. So I guess those extra inputs just give you the option to, wow, I can't get that screwed back in now. There we go. I guess those extra inputs are just extra inputs, which is kind of neat. Yeah, you have multiple volume control, and then you just run the output to your audio recorder or what have you. Probably won't sound great, to be honest, like none of these cheaper solutions that I get ever do, uh, but should be a decent for a a decent cheap solution regardless. I did also want to mention that I am, uh, what normally sits on this desk at the moment is a sit stand desk from Flex Amounts, I believe. Uh, it's super huge and heavy and it was the worst unboxing I ever tried to do. Um, but I am working on a project for like a, my little minimalist script writing sit stand desk setup that's normally here. But I had to tear that all down in order to fit all these boxes and do this unboxing. <laughs> all right, here we have the Cloud Revolver S from HyperX from Kingston. Uh, I've reviewed a couple of their, I've reviewed one of their headsets, the Cloud 2s before. Still one of my favorite wired gaming headsets, especially for USB adapters. Um, still recommend it to so many people and Chu actually uses it daily for her Overwatch games. But this is their new Revolver S headset. As usual, the unboxing experience from HyperX is amazing. Get nice little Congratulations on joining the club thing. Nice logo branding, very nice fit here. The cool part though is whereas the Cloud 2 was a solid band style, this is a suspension style, which I prefer. So this might actually be a lot more comfortable for me, even though the original Cloud 2s were still pretty damn comfortable for a solid band. So that is why I'm excited for these. I'm a little behind on that review, mainly like I just hadn't been in contact with my Kingston contact for a while and hadn't uh, been able to request it basically but they sent these over, so despite the fact that I'm late to the game on reviewing them, I am still super excited for them because they fit essentially my requirements for a headset that I would actually use on the regular. I can't get that back together, not a big deal. All right, we have a couple more things here before we get to the light kit. Here is, this little box is a capture card from Datapath. I'm not gonna touch the PCB right now or whatever, um, but it's the same company that sent me the 4K60 capture card. Uh, they sent me, they have a new one that has two inputs. One does 1080p60, the other does 4K30. Super stoked to be reviewing that. Uh, I've actually got to finish it up very shortly and send back four to them. It was just a loaner unit, but I am working on my review of, review of that now. And this is another exciting one. 
This is another Electro Voice microphone. So I use the RE20 and 320 pretty much daily now, and this is another one in that same line, the RE27 ND, and it's got like a nice chrome finish here. It is pretty slick, and I am excited to be reviewing it. I don't know if I get to keep this one or not. I don't really need it, but I will happily always add a new microphone to my collection for future comparisons and such. But again, I was sent that a couple months ago and I haven't had a chance to touch it yet either because mic review setups are very complicated. So that is the main part of my unboxing. We do have the, uh, the $100, $130 LED light kit here that I got as well. This is what BBK Dragoon got for when he does streams and does some video. He got this for himself. We worked through some examples and that's what we decided on for him. And then once seeing that he actually liked it and such, decided to pick it up for myself. So I stopped using these damn CFL bulbs because they're making me really hot. So this is a full kit. It's not just a single light or anything like that. This is a full kit. So in it, you get two newer CN160 LED panels. So 160 LEDs. And they, you just like, if you ordered these on, on their own, this is basically what you would get, but you get these in the kit because it's a two light system. You get a battery charger for the batteries that come in it, which are the Sony F style batteries. You get two of those Sony F style batteries. These are the, uh, 2600 milliamp F 550s. I've got a couple bigger ones actually in my led panels here. Um, that should be the exact same mount and I should be able to swap them in their place. Or just use these when I need to. BBK said the batteries last around uh, two to three hours, maybe a little less, but perfectly fine for my A roll shoots. And then these are the soft boxes. So these attach to the front of the LED panels and basically act as my big soft boxes that I have, you can see right there, but for the small LED panels. Take up a lot less space, and since they're LED, will generate a lot less heat. I've already talked about in a couple videos my progress towards moving to LEDs, and this should hopefully be the final thing. And so, just tiny little soft box that sits on the front. In theory, I could have just ordered these and used the LED panels I have now, but I wanted to get the full kit so I could review it, and it's also gonna be part of a $200 YouTuber kit video that I do in the future. So, two soft boxes. And then you have a bag with the light stands, which honestly, I'm not actually, this is just two bags. The light stands themselves are down here. But I'm honestly not gonna open those right now. Just a big mess that we don't need. Did my camera die? I think my main A cam may have died. <laughs> but that is the unboxings I wanted to share with you guys. So many projects I'm working on right now. Super stoked to share it with you guys. Just wanted to make this video to show them off. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Smash the like button if you did. Let me know if you want to see more craziness like this. I usually don't get this many products in at the same time to show off, but I, like I said, I'm taking on a ton of projects, having a lot of fun, and going to make some really good content coming soon. So now I've got to clean up the disaster studio because it's a complete mess now, but hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button. I think I already said that. Subscribe for more awesome tech videos and videos on everything you saw here today, and I will see you next time. It's that time of the year again. Awesome shows like Silicon Valley and Game of Thrones will soon be in full swing on HBO. Don't miss an episode with the HBO add-on for your Amazon Prime video service. You can watch your favorite HBO shows on any device, no cable or satellite account necessary. They even add more movies to your Prime viewing experience too. They're running a free trial, so check it out via the link in the video description and get caught up on the first few episodes of Silicon Valley right now. So if you had any curiosity as to what the aftermath of that unboxing video was, this, this is it. Took me about half an hour to set up the video, like 35 minutes to film it. You saw the length, add 10 or so minutes to my cuts, and probably more than an hour, probably a couple hours, to actually clean everything up and get it set up properly. properly. So. If you ever had the sad thought of, hey, I want to be like Epos when I grow up, don't. <laughs> you have to deal with this nightmare. I'm like, terrified. <laughs>